Okay, welcome. Uh, in this video, you need to just take a moment to sit back, create for yourself a nice Zen environment and bring with you an open mind so we can have this discussion. You may have heard from several of the other videos where we're referring to the rule of seven. And here I'm gonna walk you through a little bit about what that means. So let's just kick off with the number seven in business, in organizations and in life in general. And we'll kick off with the first slide here, which is a bunch of bar charts. Now you're gonna notice something interesting about these bar charts and they're just a random selection of them, whether they're vertical or horizontal, comparing more than one thing, whatever. You'll notice that they're in the range of maybe three, four, five, six, seven uh, different sets of data compared to each other. Okay, that's, that's uh, pretty common to this one. Likewise here, if you look at dashboards, and so some of you have the uh, sophistication currently in your organizations where you have dashboards, and on your dashboards you have certain widgets. And you'll notice here that the widgets on a dashboard tend to be somewhere between, well, three to seven widgets in, on a dashboard on average. And of course, within each one, there's bar charts and things that all have elements that add up to somewhere between three and seven. Now, if you look at pie charts, and by the way, please don't look at pie charts. I mean, we know that these are not good tools. Um, as it turns out, they're uh, applicable from an analytics perspective to very few, few things. But just as a nice little sampling of ones that just randomly are out there, and you can do this yourself, just Google it, take a look, whatever you have in your organization, you'll notice that the slices end up being somewhere between, guess what, three to seven. Seems to be like a cap. And again, these aren't ones we created, these are just random ones you pick from anywhere. Three to seven seems to be a standard level for analysis of things that we work with. But there's more, let's keep going. Let's look at some kind of a classification or breakdown structure. When you do some kind of a classification or a breakdown, no matter what it's related to, whether it's in the sciences or business or economics or whatever it's in, look what happens. We're in that three to seven, this is more around seven-ish range, and it just keeps coming up. This is how we're interacting and working every day, regardless of what our field is, in education, in government, private companies, whether they're publicly traded or they're private organizations, we're all working with these elements in the three to seven area. How about, since we're talking about organizations, organization charts, right? How about organization charts? What are the levels of an organization chart and how many uh, different departments, divisions, functions, or people are there in each one of them? Well, guess what? Randomly pull from anywhere if you like, you're gonna end up with three to seven. And each one of those might branch down further to guess what? Three to seven. It continues on. You can check this with your own organizations. It just repeats itself over and over again. Several more examples here. And again, you know, take your time, freeze the slide, take a look. This is where we are. And again, search for yourself as well. So what is it about the rule of seven? Well, it could be that just in general, no matter what we do, we have this common sinking to organizing what we work with in caps or let's say generally limited to seven and commonly around three to seven. Now you may notice that there could be more details, but what's gonna happen is they'll branch off of seven for another three to seven. So here, for example, just sciences, and then within the branches of physics, there are, guess what? I think you can tell me, seven. Definitely fits in the three to seven range. What about for chemistry? Uh, well, there's five. Okay, that's in the three to seven range. What about for biology? Well, guess what, there's six. Again, three to seven. It, it may branch further into lower levels, but each one, once we get into that function or that discussion, three to seven is our number. Now, some of you may be familiar with Gartner and the magic quadrants. And now if you just step back and look at a quadrant, you say, wow, it looks like there could be 27 or 30 or 18 in there, that doesn't work. But remember, this is a quadrant, it's split into four. What's in each quadrant? Now take a look, quick look and I encourage you to take a deeper look into all the magic quadrants ever created, three to seven. Now there may of course be a range where there's outliers, of course, two, three standard deviations away, maybe you get to something where it's 15 or 20, but the point is the bell curves will always play out the same 
exact number. And as, as one of the last ones to look at just for fun, here's uh, strategies for whole food plant-based living. Uh, maybe this is uh, something we're all interested in today, could be. But you'll notice that there are, in fact, seven branches off it. And within each branch, there are somewhere between three to seven components on each one. Again, you know, we don't make this up. This is just there. If you ever worked with mind mapping, uh, you've seen how, and which is intriguing, isn't it? Because this is literally mind mapping, how our brains work, what we're thinking, how we classify things. Branches of three to seven are always there. So what is it about this rule? Well, the rule is, and psychologists have dubbed this the magic number seven uh, from even the 50s when this first originated, this kind of work. And that's how many things we are able to keep in active short-term memory at a time. If I gave you a list of random terms, on average, you know, if I did that with all people on the planet, on average, you'll remember around seven. That's kind of your cap for how you do it. As it turns out for us, in all of our modeling and working with business, the range is pretty actively and pretty consistently in the three to seven range. And the limit, the limit of how far you go, at least within a certain, with one standard deviation, is going to be seven plus minus two, right? This factor drives how all people, organizations, disciplines, all the communications and knowledge we have fall into these categorizations. What does this mean to us, you might ask? And of course, that's why this video keeps getting brought up as a topic or as a recommendation from other videos, is this gives us confidence in the business-oriented direction we take with ensemble modeling for business. Why? Because our core business concepts, right, don't need to be abstracted or generic or typed. Because if we go directly with the core business concepts being used, we can be confident they will fall into the categorization of three to seven. They will not be unbounded. In other words, they will not get overly complicated because they have to be managed and understood by people. So that's, it makes it very easy. Likewise, our natural business relationships, unique specific relationships versus typed. If you're worried about doing unique specific, right? Customer has a home store at this store. Customer buys product through the store. Employee is hired at this store. Employee works for the store. If these are separate links, you're worried, or, or separate NBRs, you're worried that there might be too many, but there won't be. There won't be too many because it has to be limited by the rule of seven. If it were beyond that, people couldn't run the business. So we can be comfortable in focusing on what it is at business. Context close to key, that is to say, when we have a concept, a CBC, the things that describe that concept, the context, the descriptive information, can be put in satellites directly around it. Will we have too many satellites then? No, because there will be an average of three to seven satellites even when we do that, right? Could it be that one has 15? Sure, because there's a you know, third deviation from the norm. That's fine, but it's in general gonna fall into that category because that is what it is, okay? And it also tells us what we keep saying, which is address, right, which is just generic, is never a hub. You can always use descriptive uh, home address, billing address, shipping address as context in the satellite on a, on a concept, CBC, because it'll never be unbounded. You won't have more than three to seven. You can be confident in that. Okay, so this ties us back to why is it so important for us to do ELM, ensemble logical modeling, for you to do the business mapping, ensemble logical modeling aspect of this data vault modeling paradigm that we work with. And it's because it's all about the business mapping, modeling, and ELM. And we know that this will provide the best footprint, most viable, and have the strongest duration and viability of a model of anything else because it's literally reflecting the business. And it's safe from complexity based on the rule of seven. So thanks for taking the time. Flip back if you missed anything and reach out to us if you have questions on it. This is certainly a fun topic. See you in the next session.